What is the one thing about the adult industry you would change if you could? Um, this one might not go down well. Um, I would say more equal pay for male performers mm. in the biz. Because, again, I know, obviously, a lot, a lot of guys now make great money. Um, but then you've also got, you know, some guys that are really established that do fantastic work. But, you know, they're, they're ending, they're making a lot less than some of the girls. And, look, I always look at it this way. I remember Christoph Clark used to say to me on set years ago, the guy is always king on set. And I agree to that to a certain extent. Um, I think both uh, should be equal on set. Um, Mm -hmm. Because look, without the girl, there's no scene. But without the guy, there's also no scene. If you've got a guy that can't get his dick hard and that everybody gets frustrated. And and there's no scene that takes place. And, and, you know, you've probably been in that situation before where you've had to basically call the day because, you know, the guy can't can't perform. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would like to see, you know, maybe a bit more equal. But then again, you have to look at it. Look, people are joining to see the girl. So uh, that's there's only that kind of slight thing that I would like. I think recently with everything that's gone off in the industry as well, um, you know, hopefully now we're going to have a bit more of change. Like I, I, I've never, ever agreed with the whole IR thing. I think again, that's an American thing because it Europe, is an American, it is an American thing. Yeah. In, in Europe, you never really heard of IR. You would literally, a lot of the time in Europe, you never knew who you were working with till the day of. Um, so I, I've, I've been on sets many a time when you've got there and, oh, yeah, you're working with Sensei today. The biggest, friendliest black fella you've ever met, and she's never done a scene with a, a black guy before, and it was never a problem. It was like, okay, cool, great. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I think obviously over here in America, they've glamorized it a lot, and, you know, it's kind of, it's caused that divide where it's like, oh, well, you know, and agents uh, are really guilty of it. But then you could say studios are as well. Um, yeah. By agreeing to to pay X amount more to work with a black guy. I, I, yeah. Me, it baffles me. Um, and it's been a real sensitive subject for me, like, because um, – I've had, I I had somebody, when somebody said to me the other week and they went, oh, I bet you're one of them people that say they don't see color. And for me, yeah, I, I, you could say I'm ignorant in that way, but no, I I don't see color um, because it's just the way that I was brought up. Like a lot of people don't realize that, you know, I'm part Indian myself. And so I grew up with blacks, whites, Asians, you know, you name it. So even to this day, I never look and go, oh, Immy, you know, oh, he's the, the Pakistani lad that's now, a, you know, a banker. I just go, oh, Immy, tall guy, good looking lad, great footballer. I've never, ever seen that. Or or Dama, oh, fat black kid. I never say that. I go, oh, he was the fat lad, absolutely fantastic footballer and things like that. And so for me... It has been a bit of a touchy subject, and when people go, "Oh, yeah, well, you've never experienced racism," and it's like straight away, they people go, "Oh, you're white, you've never experienced it." Listen, I was, I was a white kid going to an all Catholic school, getting dropped off by a six foot two Indian gentleman, which was my granddad. So the the amount of racism that I had when I was growing up at school, oh you you packy, oh you stink of curry, oh did you come in your taxi, oh I bet you're in a corner shop, things like that. So, you know, I, I've experienced it myself, but you know, like I said, within our industry, I never experienced it in Europe, and personally, I, I never saw it in Europe. It's only when I came here to America that mm. I saw the big divide, and and that's a, a big change that I would love to to see and hopefully you know we're now going in the right steps where you know they're just going to get rid of that and everybody's equal paid yeah and that that would be a huge change i think yeah i had isaiah maxwell on a couple of episodes again ago and he said 
and it was so true. He said, you know, American porn is just reflective of American society. Yeah. And he says the racist, the systemic racism that we see in porn is reflective of the systemic racism that we see in American society. So, you know, yes, we definitely need to address the issue in the adult industry, but it's such a widespread issue that all of America has to deal with. Yeah, for sure. As it's a big way. It's like if you said that, and when we, I was talking with my wife the other day actually about, it, and we were saying like, in the in, if I'm talking about the UK, in the UK, I've never really seen you know racism towards black people because obviously where I grew up, it, everybody was different color, and then nobody, yeah. you know, my my grandmother was the first white woman to marry an Indian in in the UK, and it caused huge controversy. Um, I would say more so in the UK, you have more racism towards Muslims mm. than you do blacks in in the UK and that. Yeah. Because with everything that went on, you know, 9-11, and then you have a, a large influx of Asian people in the UK, you know, right. I've witnessed it myself. Uh, you know, I'll get on the tube in London and there'll be a row of three, four su- seats next to a, a Muslim gentleman and because nobody wants to sit next to him, oh, it could be a terrorist. I I'm not going to sit there, and and things yeah. like. That. And it, it's really sad when you when you think about it. But yeah, to, going back to the the subject, yeah, I would, that would be another big change. And like I said, fingers crossed. It, you know, it's gonna it's gonna come into place. But it should never have been there in the first place. Really, yeah. I've always stuck by the the saying, "Look, we all bleed claret." Yeah. <laughs> Simple as. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy how it took the Black Lives Matter movement to finally bring that issue to light. Yeah. Because it's been something that's been kind of quietly disputed for a long time. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.